This video is brought to you by Squarespace. This whole place is a huge mess and far from a usable kitchen. But in this video, that's all about to change. Today, we're installing all the remaining drawers, door fronts, cabinet fronts, all the hardware, as well as all the appliances, a bunch of really cool motorized hardware, and maybe even some lights. Now, I've spent the last few days cutting various shaped holes into all the cabinets that we just finished installing last week, which wasn't at all nerve-wracking. But that's not resulted in some places where you can run cables, I've glued some ventilation ducts, but way more importantly, that also meant that I could clean up all of this wire mess that you saw last time. And the electrician's been here and hooked up all the switches for all the lights, both in the living room and the kitchen, as well as the floor heating in the living room. Some right now, so don't really need that. And here's a little sneak peek. But I'll make you wait until everything is finished to give you the full tour. Right now, let's start installing stuff. So let's just start at the top and work our way down. First up, top cabinets. I just have to say a thanks to Bloom, which will provide all the hardware for all the cabinets. For those of you who have followed me for a while, already know, and I've always recommended all their hardware even before they supported this project. And in fact, it was I that reached out to them and asked if they wanted to support us. They did, so you'll see a lot of cool stuff from them in this video. Now that's basically already one installed. That was super easy. That's because I made this, which is a 3D printed jig template thingy that I can just align to where it goes and screw it in place, just like that. <laughs> all right, and now that all of those are installed, it's onto the front, which I'm really excited for because this is the state of our living room with random bits of kitchen just occupying all the space there is. Which brings me to the second 3D printer jig that I made to attach the brackets to the doors. And then it's just a matter of clicking this thing in place and ta-da! This thing is a little floppy, but just like with all the other Bloom stuff, you can adjust everything so that the door is perfectly balanced and both open smoothly and stays where you leave it. Now, there's one obvious challenge here. But fear not, there's a way we can solve that. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Now, the solution here is called servo drive and it's essentially a motorized unit that you can click onto the side of the existing hinges that will turn the regular hinge into a motorized unit. And the way it's activated is with one of these switches that I've installed into the side frame here. <laughs> now, I don't really know what you would use it for, but it is a pretty cool part and trick. Now, conventionally, this little unit is supposed to be installed into the side of the frame, but since my doors are inset, I needed a way to install them just onto the side. Now, Bloom actually sells these, but I 3D printed a bracket that holds that button onto the side, complete with some screw holes. So now to close the door, all I need to do is press a button and the door closes. And I run the cables to power all of this up through the small holes behind the brackets and then up along the top of the cabinet so that they come out where all the other cables meet. And the wiring is super easy. You just connect the cables together with these connector pieces, which is actually really nice because you don't need to be an electrician and you can hook all this up yourself. A couple of cover caps to make everything look nice. And we're left with this. <laughs> and now, although that is really cool, the next thing, in my opinion, is even cooler. You just need to install a few more parts first. And by the way, there's no need to make more work of yourself. We've only finished an oil, the pieces are actually gonna be visible. Because all that is gonna be hidden by a fridge. God, I hope this thing fits. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I cannot begin to describe how happy this makes me because measuring and looking at drawings is one thing but 3D modeling this months ago, cutting all the parts, installing everything and now actually having this thing fit is something completely else. Phew! This fridge is actually meant to have a separate door on the outside of it which I hope that I am doing right Hey, handle will be nice. Okay. Now this is to work. Only problem is, as usual, I want to do weird stuff and the way I built this whole thing now makes it so that the door is kind of stuck. Because I can't really lift it up right there like I should. 
Oh, we didn't need that part, did we? Oh. I think that actually worked. Now the only thing that's missing is a proper handle, and that is the cool part that I want to show you. Because this is my handle. This thing is a servo drive unit from Bloom, and it works kind of similar to the top cabinets. And have installing all this, I've installed some practice, so this thing just slides in and locks in place. Power is connected like usual, although this one gets one additional cable because it gets synchronized to a second one that I've attached in the bottom. But now we've got a fridge that is motorized, push open. Isn't that just so cool? And if you happen to press it and you didn't want anything, it'll close it again. Also, what really surprised me is how little it takes. It's like nothing. And to finish everything off, a couple of clips closes off everything super neatly. Next one's the freezer. Should essentially be the same thing, only this thing has different hinges. Because instead of having the door mounted directly to the door of the freezer, in this case, the door is on regular cabinet hinges attached to the frame. And then just like the fridge, this thing also has a motor. Installed the same exact way, just this one only has one more up top. And again, this is a really neat feature that if you don't open it, it closes it again. And now we are really starting to get somewhere. We've also installed the oven and the microwave. Both of those just slid in place, no problem. So this is finally starting to look like a kitchen. Moving on to install some more cabinet doors. We'll start with that one up there, which is this one. And just like the freezer, this one is on separate hinges. Now, again, I'm pretty pleased with myself and I've 3D printed this little drill jig for the parts that mount into the side of the cabinet. This one actually has metal threaded inserts so that you can use a drill and the hole doesn't wear out over time. And this actually worked out quite well. But just as I finished making these, this thing from Bloom showed up on my doorstep. And in here are literally all the templates that essentially replace all the 3D printed ones I've used throughout this entire build. This one replaces all the ones that I just showed you and this all the ones for the top cabinets. Now these are all adjustable and super nice. So if you do a lot of this stuff, great tool to have. But if you're just installing a few cabinets, 3D printing your own templates is definitely worth a shot. Now Bloom actually makes it super easy to do that. They have both a fantastic online catalog with all the measurements and how to install everything and you can download 3d files and assemble cabinets digitally with their own software the one tool that i'm not going to attempt making myself is this guy this is the tool that makes the holes for the other end of the cabinet door hinges and just like that the hinges snap in place click down and you got perfect hinges every time Ooh. And then to open the thing, this is the shelf. I drilled a hole into the edge of it and inserted one of these push open pins so that when we now install it, we get a cabinet door that is push open just like everything else. Now for the storage in the corner, I've already pre assembled everything in the workshop. So all the pieces just click in place. Now we just need a door. And the push up mechanism is attached separately to the top. Haha, <laughs> pretty neat, huh? Now onto the cabinet up top. <laughs> but first, a quick ad for today's sponsor, Squarespace. So when I'm not renovating apartments and building kitchens, I usually make design stuff like 3D printed boxes or pieces of furniture. And I sell the 3D files and build plans for these on my website. A website which I built using Squarespace. Now whether you want to sell physical or digital products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. Tools such as e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process and secure payments. And with the new Squarespace Fluid Engine, it has never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Start with their best-in-class website template and customize every design detail with their newly reimagined drag-and-drop technology that works on both desktop and mobile. And with their new asset library, you can upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash A-L-C-H for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Up there, I want drawers. But as opposed to the other drawers in the kitchen, 
those will be a little bit different. Because instead of using the same type of drawer like we did for all the other ones where you had to build a framework out of wood, for these, we're using the Lego box drawers by Bloom, and they go together with a bunch of aluminum parts, starting off with an extrusion that you have to cut to length, then you assemble bit by bit, piece that snap together, and here comes the really cool part, the fronts and sides are gonna be made out of glass, for which they've sent me this glass cutting tool, with which I can cut the glass right width for the drawers, slide everything together into that framework, slide on a couple of cover pieces, and we're left with this bit, which is now gonna be the front. Then for the back and the bottom, I'm actually made two wood pieces. All of that now just snaps together. We'll screw the bottom in place, click the front in place, and it just keeps getting cooler. The sides are also glass. Then just a couple more cover plates, and we're left with these awesome three glass sided drawers that will not perfectly slide onto some tracks. And since these are quite high up, the glass sides and front make it a lot more convenient to see what's in here. And the slides are attached with the same hole dealing jig like all the other doors. And the door is essentially just the same thing as the other fronts with the same push-up mechanism. Only difference is that these hinges are a bit more fancy and move out of the way so that I can open the doors no problem. And that is that whole wall finished. I mean, apart from that, but ignore that, that's for another video. Next up, the drawer fronts for all the remaining drawers. And just like with the ones that we made when we made the kitchen island, the drawer fronts for the rest of these are actually a fair bit of work. Starting out with pieces that have matching wood grain cut out of the same sheet, I've split these up, and the next step now is to router the finger pull groove in the drawer fronts. Only problem being that these fronts all have an MDF core. So to solve that, I've got a 45 degree angle on all the boards where the handle is supposed to be. I've then planed down a bunch of strips of oak and split those into 45 degree strips. I then glued all of those onto those same 45 degree edges, taking really good care that everything is the same thickness and everything lines up. And then once all the glue is set, we just need to trim off all the excess bits on the length and the sides, edge bend the remaining uncovered MDF size, and we're left with a piece that has one uninterrupted wood grain on the front and a top edge that consists of a piece of actual oak into which we can now rather uh, grow. Now I've already done that to the drawer fronts in the kitchen island. I wasn't quite happy with the way that turned out, so I've ordered a new router bit, a slightly bigger one this time, and I'm gonna router in a new, slightly larger groove so it's easier to grab onto. Oh, sanding this was a real pain. Each front takes me about 15 minutes, and there's over 20 of them. Now luckily, figured out that a piece of sandpaper mounted in the drill. It's real nice to sand the inside corners here. And the next step is oiling, which is really sped up if you have a girlfriend that's willing to help out. She's <laughs> And now after all that hard work, all that's left is installing them onto the drawer fronts. I've tried a few different ways of doing this, but at the end of the day, the method that I found works the best is to align everything based on measurements and then holding it in place with some really small 23 gauge pin nails. That's enough to hold it in place so you can double check <laughs> that you did it right. Now this wasn't planned, but I clearly didn't. But the super tiny pin nails are very easy to pull back out because that's how tiny they are. So you can repeat the process a second time and hopefully get it right this time around. And now that I know it fits, I can take it back off, properly attach it with some screws, adjust all the gaps so they perfectly line up, and then it's onto the last thing that needs a front attached to it, which is the dishwasher. Now you might remember that in the previous video, I showed you that I cut off the bottom strip, <laughs> why are you going so high? Which used to be the bottom part of the frame in that hole where we're now gonna put our dishwasher. I cut this out as we made space for it. At this thing, I'm gonna glue onto the bottom so it looks like it's one continuous piece. And to get the spacing right so it looks like there's a gap between the front and the frame, I've already glued on a thin strip of two millimeter oak, same gap as everything else. And just like with all the other drawer pieces, I cut the 45, I've glued on a strip of oak, and I've also edge banded the edges. Now to cut the groove for the fingers, this thing is too big for my router table, so, Mother than the hand thing. Let's just hope that I won't ruin all this work with this guy. 
Then reassemble. It looks something like this. With the bottom part mimicking the bottom of the frame. I gotta be honest, don't really know how this is gonna work. I've attached some pieces to the back. Oh. <laughs> Bit of adjustment later. We've got a door. And that's the last front that we need to install. Now before I show you the finished result, there's one more thing that we need to take care of. And that is this mess of cables. We can solve that with this big board. For the bottom, same thing, just this one has a bit of space so I can pull it out and access all the switches and stuff behind there. And I also made some doors to go in the bottom here, but I don't know what happened. First, I put the hinges in the wrong spot and then when I go to attach them, turns out they are slightly too short. Oh well, that's okay, I'll just have to remake these. But what I did make was some shelves and hopefully those fit. Really? You know what, we'll leave that project for another day. But while I was drilling the shelf pins, I did router in a groove into the side as well. So that now, we've got some lights in the cabinet. And the whole thing is controlled with a hidden switch on the inside of the cabinet. I mean, come on, doesn't that look cool? <laughs> but apart from that little mess up, we're essentially done with the kitchen. Now, of course, there's a lot more smaller projects that we still need to do to finish it completely. Like in the next video, we'll make some countertops. We still need some shelving, and I've got a cool project in the corner. But, I mean, check this out. <laughs> One thing that I'm especially pleased with is that the wood grain on all the drawer fronts and even the tall bits in the wall there all perfectly lines up because they were all cut out of a single sheet of wood. The drawers all work and went together just like I hoped. I made some simple thin fronts for the inside drawers and the handles on the under and top side work really well. Now, right now, everything is just a mess and nothing has a proper place. But we're gonna fix that. In an upcoming video, I'm gonna use CNC machining, 3D printing, and whatever else methods that we can think of to perfectly organize all the contents in all the drawers and all the shelves. So if you have a cool idea for organizing things that you want to see me try out, let me know in the comments down below. Now luckily we won't have to do everything from scratch because I've already installed some stuff in here. And as you might have noticed, this drawer is all of a sudden push open. That's because I installed a server drive Uno unit and that thing was seriously the easiest to install. I think the whole process went together in about two minutes. You sticky tape this thing in the back of the cabinet, slide the drawer in place, pull it back out, screw some screws in, unclip the clip, plug it in, and you're good to go. Ha! Oh my God. No way! But that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we're in the countertop, and then it's really starting to look like the kitchen. Until then, see you next time.